Welcome back, this is the Amajack, and today we got a uh, Ashwood Asylum Gunslinger Suicidal Run. I let the game pick for us. Sometimes I like to do that. And sometimes it gives us some very repetitive stuff, and sometimes it gives me garbage. And I pretend as though it never happened. It gives me the descent a lot when I, uh, when I let it pick a random map. It gives me the descent quite a lot. I'm not a fan of the descents. I mean, I can do it, but I'm not, it's not a, it's not a, uh, enjoyable map for me. I don't generally speaking like the holdout style maps. Um, you know, bio, uh, bio laps, uh, the descent, um, Krampus's Lair, although Krampus's Lair is kind of a special one. Um, I do actually quite like it. Although we aren't playing on it, I do like it. It kind of gets uh, Santa's Workshop as well, although that one I don't like because there's objectives in it. Um, it's like forced objective mode for some reason. Um, but Krampus's Workshop is special because it's it's like each of the holdout spaces is is like a pretty good map for kiting and generally speaking just kind of having fun with it. Um, whereas for some of the maps like the Descent or Biolapse, it's not really you can't really kite in it, and I like kiting. If I have like multiple people with me, I love them, right? Love them. If I got uh, if I got a medic or somebody and we're able to actually like do the holdout, that's that's fun to me. Biolapse is a really really great map for multiplayer, but for solo, I just uh, you know I just don't really like it so much, honestly. I think it's I think it's like it's a good map. All of them are actually. Um, all the official maps are good, but I just uh, for me I don't know I like I like having the whole map to to be accessed immediately. To me, it just makes it, I don't know, more fun. I, I, it's not even about it being easy, because I, I, I'll I, play, like, verticality or um, whatever, you know? And and that's kind of a similar thing to, to a holdout map. Um, you know, I'll play maps where you have enemies coming at you and you just stand still. It's just that I like having access to the whole map, you know? Like, that's that's what it's about to me. A difficult map is, isn't isn't a problem. I just I like having the whole thing. Um, anyway, anyway, what do we talk about this time? I play D and D tomorrow. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be straight up with you. I uh, I have no idea <laughs> what what uh, what I'm doing for the session. I I have. I've thought about it a little bit. I can't think of any ideas that I'm like super happy with. I'm kind of a little bit lost on it. Kind of a little bit worried how it's going to go. Um, it's, it's a part of the main campaign, so I do have to make sure that it's kind of good, at least. I really just don't know what the heck I'm going to be doing with it. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of ideas. Uh, they, they have like a choice as well. The players have a choice depending on where they want to go. Um, so it's, I kind of have to have like two things planned out, and I don't know what either of them really are going to be exactly. Again, I got a couple of ideas, kind of like the general idea of, of what's happening. I just, I don't know like what kind of enemies I'm going to be putting in it. I don't know what kind of puzzles there will be or, or any of that, you know, I just, I don't really know. Um, and we play in 11 and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I'm a little bit I'm a little bit concerned about it for sure a little bit concerned yeah um, but what can you do right I'll have to I'll have to brainstorm some stuff as I sleep tonight I guess get up early and kind of uh, work out the specifics of it and yeah like two or three hours I should be able to get a good idea they don't really move that quickly when there's when there's a few of them, they move like actually at a pretty decent rate. But when when there's all of them, they tend to move pretty dang slow. Um, so yeah, I'm not. Uh, I don't think they're gonna make it to any kind of climactic thing. So I don't have to have you know any big bad evil yet planned out. But uh, yeah, I, just, I don't know. It's a 6 a.m. session for me tomorrow too. Again, it's 6:30 right now. We play in 11 and a half hours. It is a very early session. I have to get up at 5 a.m., maybe even 
to start uh, getting this done so that I can have it all ready and planned out and stuff and kind of like catch myself up on it just before the session to understand what's happening and how everything's going to work out and all that. Um, and that's like really early for a Saturday. But that's that's when we can make it work, right? Like that's that's the time that uh, everybody was available. And somebody just said today that they're not gonna be able to make it too. So I'm like, well, sucks to suck, but I guess you just won't be there then. Um, actually, you know what? If he's not there, uh, yeah, no, okay. So uh, so what's happening is uh, like they're in this like um, they're in Watercrest right now, and they have to go and. Uh, like solve these trials for each of their characters because they each did a crime and there's going to be some kind of a uh, minor plot points for each of their characters nothing major but just a little something something you know just to be like hey that's me um, and they have to kind of like overcome it and uh, how they overcome it and how they handle the situations that they're thrust into is going to kind of affect how the future stuff happens um, but, uh, one of, so they, they cleared one of the, um, members, like, trials, and they have, uh, uh opened up two more, because they, they were all closed except for one of them, uh, they opened up two more trials. One of them is for the person who said that they're probably not going to be able to make it tomorrow, so I'm probably just going to say, hey, retcon, you only opened up one. You have to go to this place, or you you know you can go wherever the heck you want, but um, just the map didn't do what I said it did because that person's not here, and I don't want them to miss their character's thing. You know that would be very unfun. Um, and if they show up, I'll you know whatever. I didn't expect you to be there, so I kind of like didn't plan around it, and uh, yeah. That's kind of how it goes. Um, so that makes my life a little bit easier, I guess, because they're not going to be there, or they don't think they will, and I don't have to worry about uh, their thing. We could just kind of retcon it a little bit and be like, yeah, it was actually just this one that, that appeared to be open, because they haven't made any decisions yet. Um, anyway, uh, that's, that's what's happening for me tomorrow, and I'm very concerned, because I really don't know what I'm doing. That's kind of how DMing goes for me most of the time, though. I'm like, the whole time, I just, I have no idea what I'm doing. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to get through this and back into some more stuff. So I'm thinking I'm going to speed it up a little bit. We did a one-shot recently, which was a really good experience for me, because it taught me a few skills as a DM that uh, I definitely didn't have before. So I'm a little bit better at, because uh, there was a lot of pressure to make sure that the, uh, the session was ended in or that the, the adventure was ended in one session, you know? A start, uh, finish, you know, start, middle, end kind of thing to it all, right? It was very important that it all happened in one, you know, three and a half hour session kind of thing. Um, so I, I learned a few skills to uh, along the way that, that I think I'll be able to kind of put into action in uh, in the rest of this adventure that they're currently in in Watercrest to kind of make it go a little bit quicker because it's kind of been dragging on a little bit long and uh, I think a lot of that is is because of the players just kind of taking things a little bit slower I think a lot of that is also um, because I'm not keeping things going as the DM so running that one shot I think it's given me the, uh, the experience I need to, to know how to kind of like keep an adventure moving um, but the other thing is is that in a one-shot your players are a little bit more receptive to just kind of making dumb decisions and not really thinking about stuff too much so yeah but I'm thinking I we got we got to get like all of their personal things done I wanted I want it to be like one session per really maybe maybe like a session and a half per like one session to get there one session to finish and then maybe a little bit of like adventuring afterwards off to the next place and then kind of like uh, repeating like that you know and then uh, at the end there is one more sort of like all right you're you're good to get out kind of session and then they're done right um 
Again, one of my one of my players does watch, so I don't want to get into too many details about what I'm going to be uh, doing for them. But yeah, definitely. Uh, actually, I think two of my players watch. Um, or t yeah, two. Of my, I think I think two of my players watch. So I don't want to get into too many details about uh, how the campaign is going to be going. But I think I'm going to speed it up a little bit. I've been wanting to. I just I haven't known how to. I wasn't. Uh, you know, I'm, I, this is my first time DMing this uh, this group. Um, this is my first time DMing a completely homebrewed adventure with five players in it and like managing all of them and then doing like custom stuff. With it. It's a very ambitious campaign. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely uh, it's my first time doing it so I'm making some mistakes along the way. Everybody's having fun though. That's really what matters most so that everybody has fun. And uh, yeah, you know, we're, we're making our way through it, stumbling our way through mildly successfully. I think that the most important thing is, is that everybody has fun. I, mean, that, that's, I think that's definitely the most important thing, right? When you're playing D&D, uh, &D, you know? A lot of my players, uh, the, oftentimes my players, I don't really have a lot of players, but uh, oftentimes, you know, they'll ask if, if this is okay or if that is okay. And, and in my opinion, you know, almost everything is okay. I'm I'm fine with with you wanting your character to be whatever you want it to be, and I'm fine with you you making it as badass as you want it to be, as long as everybody's having fun. Then I don't really care if you're you're a skeleton or if you're a bird or if you're this or if you're that or whatever. Um, I don't really care. <laughs> you can be a homebrew, you can be whatever the heck you want, as long as everybody's having fun. Um, that's really what matters. And there are a few things that are going to kind of take away from the fun. Like if you're just broken if your character is just like completely you know metagamed to optimized and min maxed and you know it can be in like homebrew min max you know then that can be super unfun for your group um so that stuff i i kind of say no but uh i think an important thing as a dm is to say rather than just saying no you can't do that say no but we can maybe try and find a way to make it work you know, maybe move some of the skills around, kind of change things up a little bit, get you that feeling of being, you know, whatever you wanted, but without making you actually be too much stronger than, than the rest of your party. I like, I like when people are tending to be fairly consistently strong. I like everybody to get their moments of, uh, in the spotlight, you know, I like everybody to have, uh, moments where they get to feel like a total badass, right? Like that's, that's what it's all about. Um, it's a little bit hard because some people make their characters really bad and then they're super weak and I'm like well I can't really give you a moment in the spotlight because you don't have uh, anything to shine on um, so but uh, yeah some people you know they're more role play oriented and, and right now it's, it's a more combat oriented thing and um, yeah it's just uh, yeah that's about that's about it. You can do whatever you want, you know. I know that a lot of DMs would be like uh, they'll, they'll use Adventurers League rules. Adventurers League is one thing that I just uh, I can't get behind personally. It makes it very easy for the DMs to like run a campaign and like know how they're gonna handle money and experience and all that. Um, because like it's I don't know. It it takes. Adventurous League to me takes away a lot of the beauty of D&D because a lot of the beauty a lot of the beauty in D&D for me is in how fluid it is, right? That's that's what makes it so much fun for me personally is is how open it is and and how like if your character wants to do this then they can just do that. As long as it's, you know, within some degree of reason. If, if your character wants to, to do something stupid, you can just murder the person. You can jump off a cliff if you want. You can do whatever you want. There will be consequences, but you can you can do whatever you want, and the rewards will be whatever I want. You know? Or the punishment. Um, and Adventures League kind of takes that away and turns it into more of a sort of bog-standard RPG to me. Because it adds in like a whole bunch of rules, like you can't do this, you can't do that. When you do this, you get this. You know, you get your treasure points or whatever, and you can use them to spend on whatever treasure you want. It gives you a little bit of... Like, I guess that kind of gives you... Well, yeah, so it gives the, the, the treasure points... 
give the players more choice. They they give the players more of a of a choice to be like, yeah, I want this, I want that, I want this. But it takes that choice away from the DM. You know what I mean? And it makes it easier to run. And it's still D and D. You're still having fun, right? Like it's still it's still a fun thing to do if if that's you know what you got. Um, and it is a lot easier to run for the DM. I just I don't look for easy. I, I I'm fine with spending a lot of work on it because it's fun. You know what I mean? So I don't I don't like Adventures League personally. If my players want to do some homebrew stuff or some unearthed arcana or have more than stuff from more than one book or if they want to have this or if they want to have that. You know, it's okay. It's all about having fun. It's all about having fun. That's what my uh, one of my DMs told me in the past. One of my friends who DM'd for me. Um, I wanted to play as the Phoenix Sorcerer from Unearthed Arcana, and uh, he initially said, uh, "No, we're going to go with like the Adventurer's Rules, so the Player's Handbook plus uh, plus one book." Um, and I was like, "Okay, Unearthed Arcana isn't really a book because it's not really like." actual stuff so I'd have to pick like scav if I wanted it or whatever right um, and uh, if, if later on he eventually messaged me and he's like you know what actually screw it as long as everybody's having fun that's that's what really matters and I'm like yeah that's a that's a good outlook to have you know if you wanted to do it the other way that's fine I'd respect that you know I'm I'm down to respect that kind of uh, decision right but I also I I'll, I can also respect that uh, you know your priority is just that everybody's having fun, and uh, I strive to I strive to be in a similar position, right? Where it's just it's not about uh, it's not about following the rules. It's not about you know doing any of that kind of stuff. It's just about having fun. And if if fun means breaking the rules a few times here and there, then that's what you do. You know, it's fun first, rules second. And sometimes the rules have to be followed for it to be fun. You, know, you can't just get rid of the rules because that's no fun either. It's got to be this this nice mixture of uh, of following the rules and then also uh, breaking them sometimes. You know, it's only fun to break the rules if the rules are uh, if it's unusual, right? You gotta have you gotta take the good with the bad. Not that following the rules is bad, but it's kind of a similar idea, right? If you get rid of the rules altogether, then it's no more fun. When you when you break the rules, because that's just the normal. You don't you don't you don't feel like a total badass when uh, when all of a sudden like something happens that you're like that shouldn't have been able to happen, but it did. I uh, I value that in D and I'm also a DM that uh, fudges the numbers on at times. I'm uh I'll fudge the numbers at times. A lot of DMs won't. I know that a lot of DMs, you know, they roll and they, they take what they get, you know. Let the dice kind of decide how the story goes. And to a certain extent, yeah. I think that it's important to, to let that happen. Otherwise, you can just kind of narrate the story, right? Um, but sometimes, for some events, you know, you want to you wanna raise the tension a little bit, right? You want to raise the tension. You want to make things feel like they were closer than they were. Because, like, they're going to win, right? And you're like, I wanted this to be a hard fight, so you just fudge the numbers a little bit. And then they're like, I can't believe we survived that. And I'm like, well, I mean, I kind of designed it. <laughs> I, I orchestrated this entire thing. Um, but then also, a lot of the times, you know, I'm just like, I don't really want this to feel like an epic fight. You guys messed up. I want you guys to die. When I want them to die, I don't fudge the numbers to make it more, like, more dangerous. You know what I mean? I guess... I uh, I don't I don't uh, I don't really fudge the numbers to make it safer for them. I fudge the numbers to make it harder. Right? I think that uh, if you fudge the numbers too often to make it safer, then your players feel like uh, there's no danger. Right? They feel like they they have got plot armor or whatever. Right? And I don't want that. I want I want my players to feel the danger. I want them to feel the stress, the tension, the anxiety around making these decisions to do the things. So if I feel like my NPCs aren't quite doing enough damage, I might just fudge the numbers a little bit here and there. And I think that's okay. But I don't uh, I don't fudge it to make them make them have a better time too often. I mean sometimes, you know. Like if a goblin gets a crit on somebody and then is going to like one shot them and it's just going to be like a super anticlimactic death for a character. I might 
say the goblin did slightly less than enough damage to kill them in one shot. You know? <laughs> I might I might fudge that a little bit. I don't want my character I don't want my players to die in a stupid way. Well, in a not not in a stupid way. Okay, if they make the the decision to do something stupid like uh one of my players um at one point they were talking to a door and the door was sentient. That's why they were talking to them. Um and the door was like, "Nope, you can't go through here." And the door like swung open and like squished them against the uh, the wall and uh, he kept attacking the door and getting like mad at the door and like spewing profanities and, and just being mad at the door right he hates the door and uh, he didn't like the door <laughs> and I'm like I did good with this door man um, so eventually he starts to like attack the door and the door just squishes him you know and uh, he almost died there in fact the only reason he didn't die is because uh, like he rolled we at first he did die at first he did die, so I thought that a 10 was a uh, smack. I thought that a 10 on a death roll, on a death saving throw, was a fail. I thought it was 1 to 10 and then 11 to 20, um, but it's 10 or higher. So he actually did die until he looked at the at the book and was like, okay, thank god. Um, <laughs> I'm still alive, because uh, I did roll a 10 on it. So in that kind of situation, you know, that was obviously like a stupid way to die. Like he was just attacking this door and the door just squishes him. And, uh, you know, that's a very stupid way to go for sure. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fudge the numbers on that. You're the one that messed up. You're gonna, you're gonna die. But sometimes, you know, your enemies just get a little bit too lucky. They get a little bit too, uh... Yeah, in a, in a super anticlimactic way, you know, like the last enemy, they left like a, a grunt alive or something, and it's going to crit them. And then it's going to like, just do a stupid amount of damage to them, and it's going to just kill somebody. Like, they've already gone through the stress of fighting the boss, and and uh, dealing with all of his stuff, and now there's just this one grunt left that they haven't killed yet or whatever, and it, it manages to like, kill somebody just like, instantly like, death. I'm like, yeah... That's like a really anticlimactic way to go. Nobody's gonna feel good about that. So, I want my cra I want my players to cry when they die. You know, that's that's my goal. I want people to cry. I wanna. I I wish I could see them, but uh, when when one of their characters dies, I want them crying. I want them to feel emotional about that, right? I want them to feel a loss. I don't want them to feel like, wow, I just died to a goblin, like. We just, we just killed this beholder and there was just like a goblin left over and I died to it. Like, really? Like, that's that's not the kind of feeling you want in, uh, in your players, right? That's no fun. That's no fun for sure. What is fun is blowing Hans' arms off. Which I blew his head off, but you know, okay, whatever. Sometimes I dump the weapon, sometimes I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't always do it. It's 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 when I feel like it, kind of thing, you know. It's 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 on. A, it's a, it's a feeling thing. I feel bad when I don't dump the money, but when I don't dump the the arms, I'm like, you know what? They weren't they weren't meant to be dumped. This wasn't this wasn't the dump time. But this was. Anyway, that's good to have today. So thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you like it. Subscribe to see more in the future. Comment if you have anything to say. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.